Hi guys, welcome back to another video. So a couple of months ago, in my sketchbook, I actually had a few sketches of, I guess like thumbnailing of different kind of concepts or themes or whatever thumbnailing I had. So you can see here, these are kind of like my little thumbnailing and as well as notes and just ideas I wanted to do for potential wallpapers for my phone. So my main one that I wanted to do was actually a Fremenet wallpaper. And I wasn't sure if I was gonna use this for my phone, but I thought it'd be fun to attempt, which is what we are going to be doing today. But I'll be showing you guys a different example where I did one of Bombongi, which is kind of like the mascot for the K-pop group 17. So enough about these little sketches and ideas, but I do think it's always great to do thumbnailing if you can, or just like general jotting down notes so you can remember ideas that you had in the past. So let's take a look at my phone. I do have an Android phone, by the way, uh, and I did switch it to um, this live wallpaper, which I think looks super cute. It's just bonbongi kind of peeking to the side, and it's kind of this blue sky kind of background for my wallpaper. So the whole point is that when I make the screen light up, I want the character to be moving or you know be alive for the wallpaper. So I'm gonna be taking you guys through that process. So I'm gonna give you kind of like a sneak peek, by the way. So you can see in wall wallpapers you have like options but you can set a video as your wallpaper for androids i believe there's a different process or a way you can do it for iphone so if an iphone definitely do some research on how you can utilize either i think live photos or videos for your wallpaper so the one that we are going to be using for today as kind of the example is this one which is Fremenet. You can see he's kind of floating on the bottom. Let me zoom in. So for this one, I accidentally made the video too long. So I'm gonna have to do this to kind of keep my phone awake because I made it 10 seconds long rather than the five seconds. So usually the screen would actually uh, time out before the animation is finished. But I tried my best to kind of loop it and you can see that there's bubbles, there's fish, there's some plants and stuff at the bottom and seaweed. So let's go ahead and I'll show you guys the process on how I made this live wallpaper. Oh, by the way, I also have the pink version for the bonbongi one, which I think looks super cute. Uh, but yeah, let's go ahead and get to the drawing process. So for the drawing program that I'm going to be using today is Paintless Sai, just because it is kind of the most comfortable program that I use on my like laptop and my tablet. So that is what I'm going to be using. So to start off, I decided to take a quick screenshot of my current wallpaper and then I sent that to myself so that I could block out where the clock would be and any edges that I wanted to make sure nothing would be kind of like disturbing the colors or going to be overlapping. So sometimes you have like your carrier at the top, the time, your notifications, and then you have your, I guess like your battery as well. Then kind of like where the screen actually is, you have kind of like the clock, usually the date and your notification bar kind of thing in the center, or at least that's how it is for my phone. I'm not too sure if that's the default or if that differs from phone to phone. But then the last thing I blocked out was the bottom because I actually have some icons at the bottom usually. I didn't know you could toggle these off, so I decided to take them out in the end anyways, but I did block them in. After that, I decided to make the canvas gray. I also decided to kind of like rough in the composition of how I wanted to format everything because I wanted to make sure that, like I said, where I had kind of the white boxes placed, I wanted to make sure that nothing was going to be important, blocking or disrupting any of the information you might have at like kind of like the beginning of your lock screen. After that, I decided to sketch in Fremenet. So Fremenet is a character from Genshin Impact, but I love his character so much, just in general, because I find him very like cute and adorable, but also his aesthetic I just really like. And I was kind of debating between drawing Fremenet, Kokomi, or Nouvellet for the video today, but I didn't really want to rig a face for this one, so I decided to put Fremenet with his helmet on. You'll see a bit later, once we decide to do the animation, that I'm going to be doing the animation in live 2D rather than in kind of a, I guess like frame by frame animation, which is the option that I would actually usually choose to do if I didn't learn how to do something like rigging in live 2D. So 
I'm going to be treating this file a little bit differently. If I was doing it frame by frame, I would definitely section off different body parts or different sections of the background and stuff a little bit differently. So you, you would have saw that I also kind of wrote some notes into the back, which I kind of disregard later on in the process because this entire project became longer than what I was expecting. So to make things a little bit easier, as I'm doing the line work, you'll see it especially when I'm doing the limbs or the body that I'll start to section off things into different colors because my layer organization is going to be very uh, hectic on the left side. So you can see that for the most part, I'm going to be keeping all the details for Fremenet's helmet all into one layer. So how I like to do things, and I know some people do it a little bit differently depending on how you want to section off your artwork to prep it for rigging. So usually when I make my models for like, uh, I guess like VTuber models and stuff, I tend to do things section by section and I would color and shade in those sections. So I would draw the face, add the facial features, color them in, add the eyes, color them in, do the kind of like upper body, color it in, lower body, color it in, do the hair, color it in. But for Fremenet, because I thought it'd be easier this way, because I kind of separated things more or less like the torso, you have your upper arm, lower arm for each side. I wasn't too like bogged down by certain details. I did want to make sure that his, I guess like coat, jacket, shirt, because it kind of bellows out a little bit and it looks a little bit of a looser material, I did decide that I want them to be separate so that they could kind of, uh, kind of not like flutter, like bellow out if anything. Like if you're in water, usually your clothes would kind of lift up as soon as you go down kind of movement. And I decided to put in any back accessories, any ribbons and stuff, I would make them kind of be separate parts so that I can rig them and have movement separately from the rest of the body. I also decided to fill in the upper left side with Pear, which is his little kind of like mechanical penguin companion. So after that, you can see that my line art looks like an entire mess, but I will promise you it makes it a little bit easier for me to uh, recognize what is what when I'm coloring. So before I color in the figures or like the characters, I like to establish the background. So that's kind of another reason why I wanted to draw it in Paint Tool Sai because I tend to do a lot of my underwater backgrounds in this manner and I'm kind of disappointed that I didn't take more time to flesh out the background to make it a little bit more pretty and also kind of keep that atmospheric perspective a little bit better represented if that makes sense because I think a part of me knew I was going to blur certain aspects so I didn't put as much detail but I don't know a part of me regrets not putting enough detail and then a part of me is also glad that I didn't because even though I planned out the size to be whatever my screenshot was I feel like part of it still kind of condensed everything a little bit. So I think some things on the left and the right got cut off. Some things from the top and the bottom got slightly cut off. So some of the details that I ended up putting in anyways got covered by something, either because it got cut off or because I covered it when I was rigging because of poor planning. So for the background, I more or less worked on three layers and then I'll merge it down to one big layer because I am not going to be rigging much of the background anyways. I'm going to paint those and kind of draw them kind of as separate objects later. Because even right now, you can see that I'm drawing bubbles and on the left side, you can see that I'm slowly gaining a lot more layers and layers because initially I wanted to have the bubbles have its own movement, but I'll become very lazy when I do the rigging. So in the future, if I decide to spruce this one up or if I make any other versions of this, I'll definitely play around with the rigging and take my time kind of like separating things to have better movement. And another thing I should talk about is the fact that the way how Paint Tool Sai is also set up 
it kind of doesn't really allow you to draw outside of the canvas where you can see it. I know some programs allow you to do that and some don't, but because of that, I don't want anything to be cut off when I export it. So I'm drawing things kind of like in placing it kind of haphazardly on the canvas where I can see the full object. So the seaweed, you can see a lot of them are overlapping in the same areas. I also have that weird kind of, um, coral tube plant i guess also just placed floating there because once i actually do the rigging portion i will properly place them beforehand but i don't want them to be awkwardly cut off because i need them to be able to move diagonally or like from side to side without cutting off any lines so that's kind of the reason why i'm placing them like that here is kind of like where I'm kind of doing a little bit of layer organization as well. So I'm starting off with Pear because he's a little bit more condensed and has less parts for me to think about. So how I usually do it is that I'll set my line work layer of whichever part that I'm working on, which is kind of like indicated with that pale green in Pencil Sci, and I'll put it to selection source, or if you have a different program, it'll be called reference layer and I would have that set so that I can make a new layer underneath to color and it would only reference that part. And it makes it a lot easier for me to fill in the color and kind of shade and kind of work in that manner. And then as I'm working, I will merge the line art with the color layer. So I will slowly be kind of like decreasing the amount of layers I have. And as I'm kind of merging them together, I will be hopefully also naming them so that I don't get too confused and that's kind of another reason why I didn't really want to do any character if I had a face. So for Fremenae, if I did have to do the face, I would have to make each individual eye have its separate parts. So I'd have to do like the upper eyelid, I would have to do if he has lashes, which I believe he does, and then I would have to do his iris, his pupil, any highlights, the sclera, any shadows for the eyes, and any physics if you would want it, but I didn't really want to do like an excess amount of layers for the animation because what I've learned, especially since doing the bonbongi wallpaper later on, is that I think I want to make them a little bit more simple because you don't look at your lock screen for too long so I feel like a shorter duration and then less detail makes it a little bit more and an effective wallpaper in my experience so hopefully in the future I'll be moving more towards that. I already have a plan for like Coco Mies and one for Nouvellet because I think it'll be cute for Nouvellet to have him like standing kind of like underneath where your time is and have it raining and then have text flowing across that says hydro dragon hydro dragon please don't cry and then the rain to stop i don't know i, I will kind of plan it out in the future if i do end up doing it but back to the process so for Fremenae, you can see that how I've organized my entire workspace. On the right side, I have a mini version of kind of like an overview of the entirety of the drawing. I also have a new canvas with a few colored blocks and those are just to help me make sure that my colors are consistent because even though I'm okay with eyeballing some of the colors, to make sure that Fremenae and Pear were kind of like more into their background, I decided to use that kind of teal muted blue color to kind of use a multiply layer and then it kind of has a kind of a blue tint or shade over top of the characters. So it just makes sure that my colors are a little bit more consistent. And then below that, I have my references, which I believe I found off of a Tumblr that had some archived model turnarounds. So I used that to make sure that I have some of Fremenet's colors correct, his details correct, but also uh, the breakdown of the clothing makes it a little bit easier for me to rig later on. After that, I decided to throw in the fish and this is where I'm doing like layer organization. I also brought it in into Clip Studio Paint because this is where I'm kind of blurring each individual object and Paint to the side from my knowledge, at least version one does not have a Gaussian blur. So yeah. So this is kind of the overview of what we have of the components before I am doing the rigging. Like I said, I initially had all the pieces placed within the canvas without having it too cut off because I didn't really want to deal with that when I started to rig. So let's go ahead and take this into Live 2D, which is right here. I'm going to go ahead and find my file and then import it into this program. 
So I believe this is going to be a little bit overwhelming. So where I'm currently scrolling is the parameters right here. So this will actually help you with the rigging process of the movement and stuff. And then everything over here are your deformers. And this way you can see are all, all your drawing parts. Above that, you can see that there's folders and the same basically like your layers how you would see it in your drawing program and that's basically your organization of your parts so i'm going ahead and deleting and adding new parameters so that i can rig it appropriately for an animation rather than for a live 2d model sometimes if you forget things you can go back into your drawing program resave your file and then click and drag your file back into live 2d to re-import some things so i did miss a few things for Feminine's little animation so i went ahead and made those edits brought it back into live 2d and then live 2d will update that for you without having to re-rig everything or redo your parameters and stuff after that on the little left side i decided to kind of fix a lot of my deformers and do a lot of organization so that we can kind of section off each individual drawing part into the appropriate things. So I wanted Fremenay to be breathing, I wanted the helmet to be able to move left and right by tilting. One thing I did do that is a little bit different I think, I don't know, I, I feel like I'm blanking whenever I did the rigging for my VTuber models versus how I do things for like animations because I tailor the drawing and the rigging to one another whenever I do that but I feel like whenever you're doing model rigging and model drawing there's like a specific uh, format you kind of should follow for the most part so everything I'm doing here is just based on kind of my own preference I use a lot of rotation deformers which tends to be the red circle with the red line in it and that allows me to rotate or have something pivot on a axis basically and it makes it a lot easier if I want things to tilt but it needs to tilt from a specific joint so I use this for a lot of the limbs I use this for the plants as well because I'm moving the entire plant from left to right just to create some simple movement another thing that I have to kind of keep in mind whenever I do the animations for these is the pacing which I do very terribly and you'll see this closer to when we actually do the animation part and we actually have to place the keyforms but for the most part I'm just going to be focusing on just doing the movement so I'm adding a bunch of deformers I'm moving things individually and at this point this is where I kind of forgot to move things out of the way a lot of the background elements that I initially had planned to be moving and to be visible are now covered up by the seaweed because I forgot to kind of shuffle them more closer to the edges which was what I wanted initially because I just wanted to make sure that they were in view when drawing but I wanted them to be more or less cut off when it came to the time of rigging because I didn't want to have too many things at the bottom which that's kind of what I ended up with. I think it's a little bit too busy at the bottom and it's very empty at the top. Even though like at the top, more or less kind of like in the upper third of the wallpaper, I would have like the time or some kind of uh, floating object there just because of the nature of how lock screens tend to look. But I don't know if I can and I'm not too sure how I'm gonna do this for the future I would like to do them in batches where I can provide the wallpapers for you guys but I might tweak Fremenay's a little bit more before putting it up because I might re-rig it or I might just fix my deformers because one thing I don't like is like I said the bottom is very cluttered another thing is the bubbles move too uniformly You'll see here as I'm going through each individual parameter and showing you guys what is moving together and what is not. So you can see the bubbles moved all at once. And then here I have the bubbles moving kind of like almost on their own a little bit. But because of that, it becomes a little bit strange when it comes to like the actual animating part because the bubbles kind of rise and fall at the same time which is kind of what I don't like about it so I'll take more time to re-rig it maybe in the future <laughs> so moving on to animation so luckily live 2d does have a separate little function that you can do animation I'm gonna go ahead and select movie 
So now that you can see that my kind of little rigging process and stuff is now imported into here and you can see all my parameters are all in this little box. So basically as I'm going to be able to move these sliders back and forth, I'm going to be able to place keyforms. But before that, I also need to change the canvas size because it's set to like a standard video size or like the 16 by 9 but for me I need it to be my phone wallpaper size so I went ahead and changed that and then we can go ahead and select our I guess our parameters and slowly kind of like shift them from left to right or however you want and select them for each individual key form so the gray dot on my timeline is basically the key form for our animation and you can use the parameters and set them to any value you want and you can set that as a key form so it kind of makes animation a little bit easier in a sense i don't use any other animating programs or i don't use like things like after effects or anything that you can do animations in so i don't know if this is similar or this is totally different but for me i find it a little bit easier to manage though the rigging process is a little bit more tedious so I'm probably not going to be showing you guys the entire animation process. If anything, even though I'm speeding up the footage, I cut out a lot of the... Or not even cut out. I didn't record a lot of the process of me doing the animation because the animation portion where I'm adding keyframes took a long time as well. So I think drawing time, I took anywhere between I think three to five hours just because it did take me a little while to section off things for Fremenet. Um... Oh, I forgot to talk about this too. If you make any edits to your parameters or your deformers in your live 2D file, it actually reflects directly into your animation file with that uh, drawing as well, if that makes sense. So it's kind of similar, like if you need to fix something in your live 2D file, you can go ahead and fix that in your drawing program, re-import it, and then just replace it. And it'll make those changes for you without having to re-rig everything. And then the same thing for animation is that if I forgot to rig one part of the animation, I can go back to my live 2D file, kind of fix up the rigging, fix up my deformers, come back to the animation, and those changes will be reflected immediately, which is kind of nice, and it makes things a little bit more seamless in terms of adjusting things. But yeah, here's kind of the finished version for Fremenet. I'm just going to go ahead and export it. Now, I believe for live wallpaper, it can only be the video format. I don't think GIFs work for it, but if it does, then you can definitely do that. But for me, I am going to be exporting the the file as a mp4 file or like a movie file, whatever you have available when you're exporting it. And this is kind of what the final result looks like. Like I said, I made it a little bit too long as it is kind of 10 seconds long rather than five seconds. And it's a little bit too busy on the bottom, but overall still very cute. Oh, I also threw in some extra footage of me doing the rigging process for Bombongi. Oh, you can see also like when I make changes in Clip Studio Paint and then you can just re import it. But I wanted to show this portion because like I said, you don't have to do a lot of like parts or a lot of rigging for your animations to still make them look really nice. So for Bombongi, I basically only had a couple of deformers on different body parts so that his limbs and his head can move and also his entire body. And I mostly use the rotation deformer. Then for the parameters, it became very simple. He's just basically going to pop in and out of the screen and he's also going to breathe a little bit or like wiggle his arms. And then after that, I also have a little bit of glowing and him just waving. So it's very simple, but I find this wallpaper much more effective than the Fremenet one. So I do apologize that uh, the Fremenet one might look a little bit overly crowded. So like I said, in the future, if I can, maybe I'll redo it or I'll do some other ones where I will properly kind of format everything or plan everything so that it does not become so cluttered and so disorganized but i still think it's a good attempt at it i just need a little bit more patience as well as just kind of a back and forth learning process where i finish it find out the problems and then in the future i will try to correct them so here's kind of the bombongi animation you can see that 
not as many keyforms for the animation. It's just much more simple. I'm just shifting some of the keyforms over so that the bonbongi waving comes in a lot quicker when you unlock your phone screen or you tap your phone screen because I think that's a little bit cuter. And here's the pink and the blue version. I'll make sure to link this in the description if you wish to download it because it will be on my pay hip and it's basically from zero dollars to whatever you want to pay so you can just get it for free if you would like. And that should be it for the wallpaper and the entire drawing and rigging process. I don't know why, but I always had an Android phone, but I never really took the time to do any kind of animation or a video for my wallpaper, but I always think that these are super cute. So hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video and I'll talk to you guys next time in the next video. Bye!